Welcome back to this Computer Science One video series. In this short module, we'll cover debugging and debugging techniques. A bug is an error or flaw in a program or computer system that produces incorrect or unexpected results. The process of debugging involves identifying and resolving bugs so that the program or system works as intended or expected. In this first part, we'll cover general techniques and strategies for debugging. Then we'll demonstrate the use of a debugger tool on a buggy program. Recall that there are several types of errors. Syntax errors are errors in your code that the compiler cannot understand and thus will not be able to produce an executable program. There are also runtime errors, which are errors that the compiler cannot necessarily catch before they happen because they happen when the program actually runs. Dividing by zero or a segmentation fault due to a null pointer are runtime errors, for example. Logic errors occur when you have written a syntactically correct program, but the logic that you've expressed does not match what was intended. We saw this many times with conditionals and loops, off by one errors for, in loops, for example. It is runtime errors and logic errors that debugging will help us to resolve. Now, up to now, you've probably been using a poor man's debugging strategy. That is, you've been using print statements to determine the values of a variable at different points in a program. However, in practice, this is completely insufficient, as you might have already experienced. It requires a lot of manual time and effort to write and to remove a bunch of print statements. It also does not create any reproducible tests or artifacts like writing unit tests does. This is more of an ad hoc strategy for testing. If anything breaks in the future, the process will have to be repeated again to diagnose the problem. Worst of all, this strategy is extremely fragile and error prone. Many runtime errors and undefined behavior are non-deterministic. For example, memory could be corrupted in one part of the program, but only manifest itself as a crash later on in the program. Print statements would be completely useless in this situation. Moreover, the standard output is a buffer. When you print stuff to it, it's not necessarily output to the screen right away. Thus, a problem could occur later in the program when not all the print statements have actually made it to the output screen. The standard output is generally useless as a debugging tool. Ad hoc testing can serve a purpose, but it's also insufficient. The worst approach, however, is if you just aimlessly try changing your code in the hopes that somehow it'll magically work. Really, debugging starts with proper testing. Identifying a bug indicates that not only does your program have an error, but also that your original tests were insufficient. Proper unit tests and good code coverage with your tests should have prevented the bugs in the first place, ideally making debugging unnecessary. Nevertheless, when bugs are found, debugging involves not only correcting the issue, but also correcting the test suite by adding a new test that will cover the identified bug. Learning and practicing proper testing is the result of accepting that you will not write perfect code. Learning and practicing proper debugging techniques is a result of accepting that you will not write perfect tests. There are no hard and fast rules about debugging, but there are some general strategies and best practices that you can follow to make the process easier. The first step is to understand the bug. You need to identify how the program is failing, what the inputs or conditions are that are causing the error, is it in fact a bug in our code or might the error be in our understanding of the problem or solution? The next step is to reproduce the bug. Doing so forces us to formally identify correct behavior. The program should act in one way, but it's actually acting in a different way. This means that we can design a reusable test case that demonstrates or covers the bug. And it gives us something to work with to actually try to identify the problem. Then we need to isolate the bug. We need to rule out possibilities that are external to our code, such as a configuration or system issue, that we're not using out of sync code, etc. We also need to re-examine our assumptions and understanding of the problem. If we have certain expectations about the input, such that it's always positive, are those assumptions correct or might we need to add additional error handling? Ultimately, we're trying to narrow the failure point down to a testable unit, such as an error in a module, a particular function, or a specific line of code. We then need to investigate. 
we need to use our knowledge of the code to formulate a hypothesis about what is going wrong. We then need to test that hypothesis to see if we're right about the error and design an appropriate bug fix. This is best achieved when using a proper debugging tool, which we'll cover in the next part. Finally, we fix it, test it, and run regressions to make sure that our fix doesn't break something else. And we need to document the change. Typically, this is done in a commit message, 